So the next risk that we're going to be trying to protect our app against is um, to do with MIME type sniffing. And I'll give you a basic explanation of what that is. Basically, um, when we send back resources like images or JSON or CSS, um, what you can do is you can set this content type header to say um, like what kind of file this is. So if I was sending back an image, for example, I'd say like content type JPEG image or something. And then the browser knows um, to treat that as an image. Now, sometimes if you don't give a content type, what a browser will try to do is it will look inside the code and intelligently try to guess what to do with it. So it will look and it will see if it's binary, for example, that it might be an image or if it's got like um, angled brackets and stuff, it might think it's a HTML file. Or um, if it's got like semicolons, curly braces, it might think it's a JavaScript. And it will try and do with it whatever is intended based on the type that it thinks it is. Now, the problem that comes with this is if our app gets compromised for some reason and some of our resources um, get swapped. So if, there, if I had an image file, for example, what a hacker could do is they could upload a JavaScript file um, to run some malicious code and then they could change the extension to jpeg or um they could just not give an extension for example and then the and they and if the content if i forgot to put the content type header into it the browser will look at that and think it's javascript so it'll accept it okay because it thinks it's accepting the image but then it reads the file and thinks it's a javascript and starts executing this on the user's machine and this is bad um, if you want to find out more about this type of attack, um, Hussein Nasser has actually done an amazing video on this, so I'll link to that in the description. So that's basically um, the issue with this, and that's what we're going to try and mitigate. And the way we can do that is when we're sending back a response, we can set up a header called X content type options. And this X content type options has a number of values and the value that we want to set is no sniff which is this and what this does is if it doesn't have a content type header it basically tells a browser okay don't try and guess what this is and do what you want with it if it doesn't have a header um, just don't just don't do anything with it and that will prevent like things like JavaScript from being executed accidentally. And to do this um, challenge, by the way, um, an important thing to note is that the helmet version right here has to be 2.3.0. So in new package.json, helmet should be 2.3.0. And again, if it's not, you want to go into tools terminal, run npm uninstall helmet, npm install helmet at 2.3.0, and then refresh. That will change the version of helmet that we have right here. So the way we can set this um, content type header to no sniff is by using a helmet method called no sniff and we can mount this for all routes. So this will be applied for all requests. So what we want to do is down here, um, here, what we want to say is app.use and we'll say helmet.no sniff like this. And that will make sure that for any requests that we make to this app, um, the no sniff header will be applied. I'm just gonna run refresh here. Um, it might take a while to be applied, but ideally I'd like to show you this header. So um, what I'm gonna do now is just do a hard reload here. And I'm gonna try sending off a request to this page again. So if I submit that, um, and then we can see the challenge passes, but more importantly, um, if we look at the response header, we can see that the X content type options header has now been set to no sniff. So and again, if some one of some of our resources in here, so don't have um, like the content type defined, like for example, we have this defined a style sheet, for example. If so, if it doesn't have something defined, a content type defined, the browser would try and um, guess what it is by looking at the content. And it, it, this will stop potentially dangerous JavaScript being executed.